in chapter one, these are the points that we need. We need to know. Starting the chapter, first of all, you need to know the following. For any computer system, it will consist of hardware and software. And whenever we say hardware, we mean physical components. Hardware means physical components. By physical components, we mean these are components that you can actually touch and feel, such as these components in the picture. All of these are considered hardware. So as you can see here, we have the case, the computer case. And this case will house all the internal components. And why we call them internal hardware or internal components? Because they will be inside the case. And some of the components will be outside the case. For example, you can now see the monitor alone, isn't it? So this is an external hardware. Can you see the mouse? Yes, this is an external hardware. Can you see the keyboard? This is an external hardware and you can touch them. These are physical, external components. And if we have speakers, you will also see the speakers. However, if we look inside the case, you will find that some of the components are hidden from you. Some of the components are where? Inside this, this case. And these components like the motherboard, the CPU cooler, the CPU, expansion cards, SSD, HDDs, and the power supply. All these components are inside the computer case. That's why we call them internal physical components. Are we good? So the hardware is divided into internal and external. If I ask you the monitor, do you say the monitor is external? The keyboard, external. Same goes for the rest of the component that you can actually see outside the computer case. Inside the computer case, we have lots of other hardware or physical components, and we're going to discuss each and every one of them in details. So you will be asked to explain, define each and every one of these components, internal or external components, and why we need them in our computer. Because remember we mentioned, to design a computer, what we need? A hardware and a software. Now, what we mean by hardware? Physical components, which makes up the computer system. Each and every one of them has a specific role, meaning has a specific purpose. We need it for a specific purpose. Now, let's look at them one by one. The first component inside the computer or the first internal hardware, we call it the central processing units or in your book, another name for it is a microprocessor. This is the processor of the computer. This is, as you can see here, the brain of the computer. Everything that should be executed will be executed through, through these components. Meaning, whenever you run any application in the computer, what's the components responsible for running that application for you? The processor. It's the brain of the computer. And the processor, it's a very, very, very expensive components. Very expensive. Why it's very expensive? Because it's very fast component. The processors can do billions of instructions per second. Can do billion of instructions in one in one second. This is a huge speed. This is a very big speed. And speed means cost. Whenever later we discuss any components, whenever we say this component is very fast, expect that this component is very expensive. Why? Because the speed is money. Speed is cost. So the microprocessor will be there to execute any instruction you do. Any instruction or anything. Whenever you double click on any file, you'd like to open this file in your computer or in your mobile phone or any digital device, the microprocessor is the component responsible for executing your commands or opening that file or that app or that game for you. Are we good? 
is divided into two sections. One section called the control units, another section called the arithmetic and logical unit. Now, the arithmetic and logical unit, this is responsible for doing two different tasks. If you are doing some kind of arithmetic operations, it will do it by the arithmetic unit. If you are doing logical operations, it will be done by the logic unit. What's the difference? Logical operation means you ask, for example, to compare two things, whether they are greater than each other, smaller than each other. That means your answer will be always logic, yes or no, true or false. Or you are doing more complicated mathematical operations. Are we good? So this unit is called what? The arithmetic and logical unit, which is part of your microprocessor. The other part of the microprocessor is what? The control units. And why we need to control? Because normally whenever you are opening your device or using your computer or using your mobile phone, you might be doing a couple of tasks at the same time. For example, you might be writing a letter or typing a letter using your keyboard and at the same time listening to music. So the computer or the microprocessor will be responsible for managing these connections. Especially if you are jumping between one application and the other application, the microprocessor will be controlling what input devices will work, what output devices will work, and these kind of operations. Are we good? So whenever we define it, we'll define that the central processing of microcomputer, the brain of the computer, and it consists of two parts, the CU and the ALU. Now we mentioned this is the brain of the computer. Now that means whenever you have the brain of the computer or the main processing unit, you need to be able to connect all the other components so they can be reached by this CPU or by this microprocessor. Yes? So this brain has to reach each and every other components. Even the mouse and the keyboard has to be reached by this microprocessor to control them. Yes? To be able to control them. To do so, we need a board. We need what we call the mother a motherboard. And if you look, this motherboard consists of circuits and connections that will allow each and every connected components to be able to reach what? The microprocessor, which will be attaching this slot here. Yes? So the micro, the motherboard, is the main printed circuit in a computer, and the motherboard is the backbone connectivity through which all the component, internal and external components, will be connected together. So we have them all attached to each, to each other. Are we good? So why we call it a main printed circuit board? Because there are other circuit boards. But however, this one is the main one. So what's the task? All component will be attached to this motherboard. And it's inside the CPU. Example, whenever you have a flash drive and you would like to connect this flash drive to the computer, what do you do? You'll find the interface, you'll connect the flash into the interface, and what will happen? It will be connected from an inside with the, with the motherboard. And now the microprocessor will be able to reach this flash for you and open the content on the computer. The same goes if you'd like to listen for music and you are actually attaching a headset. What do you do? You attach the cable, and then the cable will be connected to the motherboard, and then the microprocessor will be responsible for sending you the music or whatever you are listening to. Any question? The what? The CPU? Yes, the CPU is very small. Why the CPU is very small? Nowadays, because of the technology. That's why we call it what? Micro. Micro means very, very small. The size of a coin. It can be the size of a coin. That's why the name comes micro. Processor means a very small processor. Are we good? So now we know the task of, or the purpose of, the motherboards. Now what else? What we have inside the computer? What other things we have inside the computer? You'll find that other things we have will be the back-end storage devices. Other things will be the back-end storage devices. And if you look before I explain this, if I draw it for you, if we have, this is the microprocessor. Which is the brain of the computer, isn't it? Yes. So the microprocessor will be taking all your inputs. 
processing them, and then what you get? An output. For example, you double click on an app, what will happen? The app will be processed and open in front of you in a monitor, isn't it? Or on the screen where you can do whatever you like. Now the question is, sometimes whenever you are opening files, you need to save the contents. You need to save the contents. For example, in the computer, we'll be doing Word documents where you will prepare documents. And then at the end, I will ask you to, to store it or save it. Where it will be stored? In a component called storage device. So that means I'm opening a file, and then I'm adding information to that file, and then I will ask the microprocessor to store the file. It will store where? In a storage device. This storage device can be named HDD, hard disk, or can be named SSD, or can be a USB flash, or can be a CD, you get it? All the storage devices you have. Now, if you ask me you would like a file, you will bring your flash, isn't it? A flash is a storage device. I can copy and paste file in this small flash, so you can go that home, for example, and open that flash where? In your own computer. Are we good? So storage devices are there for what? Storing data. Storage devices are there for storing data. We have different ones, we'll discuss them later. But here what we need to do, we need only to understand that the microprocessor needs some time to store information and whenever they store this information, the information will be stored where? In a storage device. For now we'll call it a hard disk drive and I'll explain later why. Now the question is, what will be stored in the hard disk drive? What kind of data is stored in the hard disk drive? First of all, whenever you open up your computer, Let's say your phone. Whenever you launch your phone, what will happen? The operating system will kick off. Huh? The operating system will, will start. For example, if you are using Android, the operating system of Android will be there. If you are using iOS or Apple, iOS will be, will be there. That means inside the, inside the phone, in the storage device of the phone, what is stored? The operating system. Without an operating system, you'll not be able to interface with the device or communicate with the device. That's why whenever you switch on the computer, what will happen? Windows will load. Switch on your mobile, what will happen? The operating system of your mobile will, will start. You get it? So what will be stored there? Operating system. What else? What do you have in your phone other than the operating system? What do you have? Apps. So whenever you like an app and you download an app, it will be stored where? In the storage device. If you don't have a storage device, no app can be downloaded and saved in your storage device. What else other than app? Pictures, audio, video, general files. We call them all files. So if I ask you why we need the storage device, you will say for storing three types of information one of them is for storing your operating system for storing your applications for restoring the user files and by files i mean audio video or general general files are we good so what we have so far we have a microprocessor connected to input devices an example of input devices is a mouse and a keyboard. Why we need the keyboard? To type, to input letters. Input or output letters? Input, because we are typing letters and the letter will be shown where? On the output device, which is the monitor. Why we need the mouse? To input, clicks or drag icons or do some kind of other pointing operations. So the mouse is an input device. What about the microphone? Input or output? Input your sound, input your voice. Microphone is an input device. Now let's talk about output devices connected to this computer. Monitor, what else? Do we need speakers? The opposite of microphone. Microphone will input, speaker will output, so you can listen. Are we good? 
And sometimes you'll find in offices, printers. Whenever you go to the office, you'd like to print a paper, they will order the computer to print, and then the printer will print the paper. That means the printer is output devices. So whenever you have a computer, having a microprocessor, you will have to attach some input devices to input information to the computer, and output devices to output information from, from the computer. And what if you'd like to input information and save it? Where do you save it? In the storage device. And that's why we need a storage device. So the question is, how can the microprocessor, for example, access your voice through a microphone and output the voice through the speakers? How can these two devices, two components connected? The mother board. That's why there is a mother board. So whenever you are inputting something, the microprocessor will know that you have input something because all input devices are connected to that. And all output devices, motherboard. And every, and each and every component is connected through the motherboard. So you can double click to play a sound, what will happen? The microprocessor will take the sound from the storage device, send it where? To the speaker, through the motherboard. You get it? The same like, if you are inputting a sound and would like to store your sound, record your sound, for example, what do you do? The sound will be, will be accessed through the microphone. Who will take the sound from the microphone and store it in your storage device? The microprocessor through? So the motherboard will facilitate the connection between these components all together where the microprocessor can reach each and every one of them. Are we good so far? Yes, but there is a problem. The problem is they found that if we compare the speed of the microprocessor, which you'll say the speed of the microprocessor is, it can do billions of instructions per second. So it's a very fast speed. They found that whenever the microprocessor, let's say I have a movie, it's stored in my hard disk. I have a file, which is a movie. And I'd like to play this movie. How will do it? Double click on the movie file. What will happen? The microprocessor will take the movie from the hard disk and send it to the monitor or to the screen, isn't it? Yes? Through the mother, through the motherboard. Now they found that whenever the microprocessor requests this file from the storage device, the storage device will send the file or the number of file needed. However, the storage device speed is not a match for the microprocessor speed. It's very slow. So microprocessor will be waiting for the storage device to respond. You get it? Just like if you'd like to play a game and then you click on the game, what will happen? This game has to be taken from the hard disk or the storage device and displayed where? On the screen of the device, isn't it? What if the storage device is slow? You will not be able to play a game. It will be lagging. The game will be, will take minutes to load, minutes to play. You get it? At the end, you will just close it. What's the problem? The speed. The storage device speeds are no match for the microprocessor. So the questions will be, why we don't just make the speed of the storage devices as the speed of the microprocessor? Is it a solution? Yes. Why not? Very slow, make it fast. What's the disadvantage? What if we make the storage device as fast as the microprocessor? Cost. No one will buy the computer. No one will be able to afford the computer. Because it will become very... Yes, the microprocessor now in the market, you will find a decent microprocessor, let's say $300. A very fast one, a good one. Can you pay the same price for a storage device? That would be too much, plus the other devices. So they found that it's not practical to make the storage device, this huge storage device, very fast, because it's big. It will store so many information, operating system, application, and user file. So they said this is not practical. So what's practical? What would be? more practical. The more practical one, they said, we will include another memory. We'll include another 
memory. This memory, we will call it the random access memory or the RAM. You heard of it? The RAM. Now, this memory is a very fast temporary memory. Very fast temporary memory. Meaning, by temporary is whenever you click on any application now on your phone, what will happen? The microprocessor will take the application from the storage device and put it where? And then it will open the application for you from the RAM. Why? Because the RAM is fast. So whenever the application is taken from the slow device, which is the storage device, into the RAM, and then the processor be dealing with the RAM, the, the processor will be working with a very high speed, and you will feel satisfied whenever you are playing or using any app on your device or computer. You get it? However, it's temporary, mean, whenever you open the application, it will be taken where? To the RAM. What if you close the application? It will be removed from the RAM. Why? To give you space for other applications that you will open. Why? Because the RAM itself is small in size. Let's compare it. If we have a storage device, this storage device size can be 500 gigabytes. 500 gigabytes. The RAM will be 8 gigabytes. Can you see the difference? That's why the hard disk can store everything. Operating system, all your application, or your movies, or your photos, or your picture. Everything you need can be stored where? In the hard disk. It's very big, 500 GB. You get it? What about the RAM? Very tiny. Please, whatever you are running now, send it to the RAM. If you are not running it, if you are not opening an app, do not take the app to the RAM. Leave it where? That's why whenever you click on an app, you will find there is a fraction of a second, and then the app will open. This fraction of a second, the microprocessor will take the app from where? Hard disk, put it where? In the RAM. Once this loading screen disappears, you will find the app now is fast. You will notice this whenever you are opening apps. It will take time to, to load. We call it a loading time. Why it takes time to load? Because part of this app has to move where? To a faster memory, which is the RAM. You get it? Can be what? On the phone? For example, my phone. Example, my phone is uh, 256 gigabyte hard disk. Storage device, my storage device is 256. My RAM is 8 GB. I have another phone which is 128 gigabyte and my RAM is 4 GB. I'm struggling with this phone. Whenever I open even WhatsApp and I'm scrolling down quickly, what will happen? A lag. Whenever I'm playing a video, a video lag. Why? The RAM is? That's why I replaced my phone and I bought a new one. So bigger RAM? Faster. Faster device. Especially if you are running more than one application at the same time. Because you have big RAM. So for example, let's say this is my RAM. 8 GB. I open WhatsApp. WhatsApp took 100 megabyte. I open Facebook. Facebook took 400 megabytes. So this is WhatsApp and this is Facebook. I'm watching a movie at the same time. The movie will take one gig. Can you see? The RAM will be divided into the app you are currently running. So if you have a big RAM, you can, you can either run a big app or a multiple of apps. Are we good? You can run a big app or a multiple of, of apps. So now, why the RAM is small? Why the RAM is not as big as the hard disk? Why? Why the RAM is not as big as the hard disk? Because expensive if you make it big. Remember that? That's why we left the, key, the, the storage device as it is, the hard disk. We said, no, 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 stay there big and slow. Stay big and slow. We will bring a small and fast. Why small? For the cons the cost, the expense. Now, if you go to the market now and you buy 
to buy a 500 GB hard disk, it will cost $100. Are we good? If you are buying an 8 GB of RAM, it will also cost $100. Can you see? 500 giga hard disk, same price as only two, only 8 giga RAM. You get it? The RAM is very expensive. The same price. You are getting only an 8 gig RAM. Why? Fast. Fast means cost. Expensive. Fast means expensive. Are we good so far? Yes? So what we have, if you go, if you try now and, and summarize what we have done so far, what we need, a micro, processor, input devices, such as keyboard and, and mouse, and what we call an output devices, such as monitor, speakers, and, and what the rest of the output devices. Now, see, whenever we are running anything, sometimes we need to run it from somewhere local. If I'd like to run an app, I need the app to be somewhere in my device. That's why what I need. What do I need? What I will store? Operating systems such as the Windows, Android, or iOS. What else? Applications. What else? User, user files. And this storage device will be connected to the. However, the microprocessor does not like to run any kind of instruction from the storage device. Why? It's very slow. So the microprocessor will say, okay, please, if you're running something, send it where? And whenever you would, you don't want you don't want it, for example, what you do, it will be just removed from, from the RAM. Why? The RAM is very fast. And it will run only the currently open apps, currently open applications. Are we good? So far? How all these are connected together? Motherboard. All of these are connected together through the main printed board, which we call it, the motherboard, which facilitates the connection between, between all, all of them. Are we good? So this is what we call the hardware, and let's go through them. So we finish the CPU and the motherboard. We finish now, we know what we mean by back in our secondary storage devices. Later we'll discuss what we mean by hard and solid. Next, what we have? The RAM. Why we need the RAM, we said? Data are currently in, in use because it's very fast and better. Another one we call it a ROM, a read-only memory. And this memory is very important whenever you just switch on the device. Once you switch on the device, the microprocessor needs to know what it should do. Because whenever you are switching on the device, you don't have the operating system to control anything. Isn't it? One when you will be able to control the computer, at what time? Whenever you have the operating system and you log in, isn't it? After that, who is in control? We are in control. But before that, who will tell the microprocessor once I switch on the computer, go and find the operating system and load the operating system? Check that the devices are connected. You? No. So whenever we switch on the computer, the microprocessor has one instruction. It will take it from where? from the ROM. So the microprocessor will ask the ROM, what should I, what should I do? The ROM has two instructions. First of all, first one, find the operating system and load it, open it up. The second instruction, check all input and output, devices that are there and connected and are working perfectly. So these two instructions will be repeated every time you switch on your device, either a phone or any digital device, because you are not in control. 
So once I switch on the device, the microprocessor will take this instruction from the ROM. The instruction says what? Go to the following location. You will find an operating system. Please execute, load it. And go and check the input and output devices are connected. That's why if I, if I, for example, now switch on my computer and disconnect the keyboard and mouse, on the screen it will be written no keyboard and mouse, for example. Who's telling me no keyboard and mouse? The microprocessor. Why the microprocessor check the keyboard and mouse? Because the instruction in the ROM asks the microprocessor to do two things. To find the operating system and load it, and to check that, that the input and output devices are connected perfectly. So why we need the ROM? To boot the computer up. To summarize it, the ROM is, the ROM is needed, why? It has the instruction needed to boot. Meaning, it has the instruction needed to find the operating system, show you the operating system. Once you get to the point where they ask you to insert your username and password, now you are in control. Now my processor will be just waiting and looking for you. Because at the end of the day, the microprocessor is just a brain that we order. It's a dumb component. We order it to do things for us. So if I ask you why we need the ROM, to boot up the computer, or to instruct the microprocessor to find what? Operating system and? Yes, and check the input and output files. That's why the ROM, unlike the RAM, is what? Permanent. You get it? What it will store? Startup. Meaning how to find and launch who? Operating system. And we call it what? The BIOS, the basic input output system. And this is the one responsible for checking your input and output devices. That's why we call it what? Basic input and output system. Which even stores what? The date and time of your system. That's why whenever you open your device, the clock is always accurate. It will be stored. The first time you will do this kind of settings where you select your date, you select your time, but later you will find that it will be automatically stored. Are we good? So the ROM is permanent, the RAM is temporary. The ROM you can only get from read only, the RAM you can read and write. Why? You can put apps and remove apps from the RAM, isn't it? That's why it can read, get app, get information from the RAM, and put information in the, in the RAM. And these are the differences. Check them later in your notes and make sure that you know them. And you will have them even separated in this kind of table. Because in the question, in the test, we will be asking you to differentiate between the RAM and the ROM. Different components, different usage. Next, what we have? A video card. Why we need a video card? This is the cable that you connect to your monitor. This cable is connected on the other part in the, in the motherboard with the video card. So if you would like to display picture on the monitor, what do you need? A video or a graphic? A graphic card, yes? Enable what? Graphics. Graphics mean videos, isn't it? And other graphics. Do we need sounds? Microphone and speakers. What we need? A sound card. Can you see? Here where you connect your speakers. Here we connect your microphone if you have a headset. You get it? So this card will be attached from this side to the motherboard, just like the rest of them. Yes? And it will be enabling you to either input a sound or output a sound. Are we good? So it will allow you to connect what? A microphone and a speaker. Are we good? Now, what about a network card? If we need a network card. Network, from the name. That one on the top, see? I have one on the, on the top of my case. That one is responsible for allowing me to access the internet. So a network card is there to allow you to access the internet. It can be wireless, just like the one that I have there, 
or it can be through a cable just like the ones the blue ones in your computer can you see can you look at your computer you'll find a blue a blue cable this is a network cable that means all these devices uses a cable network car where you will be accessing the network however through cables if you have a laptop like me if you have a phone you can access it through wireless through an access point can you see it there at the corner of the lap the white one on the top white the top there can you see what is that an access point allow you to access networks are we good previously we used to have what we can call it an optical disk drive if we are using what but nowadays what we use flash usb sticks everywhere why smaller in size more robust cannot be scratched easier to carry around isn't it that's why you will find now from now on the series are not that popular unless you are buying a movie or buying an application you will get it either in a cd or in a dvd or in a yes and in chapter in chapter three we'll be discussing the differences between cd dvd and blu-ray but you know why you need them advantages of them portability I can get something on the CD, take it, and then use it in another computer. What about the power supply? Why we need it? Why we need a power supply? To provide power for all the physical components, yes. To all the internal devices, or internal components, and external components. Speaking of external components, can you look? What we have here, input hardware, Output hardware. Input, why we need them? To input data into, and we mentioned them, keyboard and, what is this? Microphone, and what is this in the supermarket? A barcode, reader. They prefer it other than the keyboard. They prefer whenever you buy something from a supermarket now, what they do? They scan the code, the barcode on the products, and then the product name, the price of the product will be displayed on the monitor. So this is a very even accurate input device. Better than, more accurate than the keyboard. What about output devices? What is this? Printer, speakers, monitors, projectors, like this one. All of these, what we call them, output devices. And we have external devices, meaning I can have a flash in my phone like, or cameras. I can have what? A memory card where I can store information and then take it to another place. That's why I call it what external storage devices. Meaning for, take them for portability. I can have an external hard disk. Can you see it here? Attached to the computer. So I can, for example, save information here and take it with me and copy and paste in another device. So all these, we call them what? Why? They are connected externally. And they are storage because they are there too store data that's why i call them what external storage simple and now we have done the hardware part which is the physical components however these hardware cannot work unless there is a software so the software is there to control and manage the hardware the software is there to control and manage the hardware so the software is just what a collection of command and instruction that will control and manage what the computer by meaning of the computer i mean generally speaking to control and manage the hardware so are these physical no software are not physical example of software operating system Example of software is the Windows, the Android, the iOS, all of this we call them software. Yes? If you are playing a game, for example, Candy Crush, is it a software? Yes. No, it's an app software. So there is a difference between Windows and Candy Crush, isn't it? What's the difference? What's the difference between Candy Crush? an iOS or Android on your phone? 
It's an app, it's a small app. Can the crochet there to play? Again, only. Can we use it as a calculator? Can we use it to play videos? So we have two types of software. One of them we call it what? System software. And other software we call it what? Application, these are normally installed by you, by the user to do a specific task. And this is whenever you go into the store and select an app to download. You download them for a specific task. That's why we call them apps. Operating systems such as Windows, iOS, and Android, this we call them system software. Because this we need them to control and manage the whole computer. Are we good? Let me give you an example. These are the hardware. Look. These are the, and on the top here we have the operating, no, at the top here we have the apps. In the middle, I will have what? The operating system. Can you see now? What's the purpose of the operating system? The purpose of the operating system is to manage the hardware and manage the apps. For example, if you are running a video, trying to watch a video, the operating system will automatically tell the speakers and the monitor to be ready. Why? You are playing a video. So the applications or the operating system will send a signal through the microprocessor to tell what to the monitor. Get ready, speakers. Get ready, let's play the video. You get it? So who will control the hardware and the apps? The operating system. Whenever you open a couple of apps, the operating system will, will be able to manage how they can share the hardware, the same hardware. Let me give you an example. I'm, for example, looking at two different pictures at the same time. So I will divide my screen into half. Here, I'm, I'm, I'm showing picture B. And in this side of the screen, I'm showing picture a, how many pictures do I have? Two different files. Who will control and who will tell the screen to divide the screen into two sides and to show picture B here and picture A here? So the operating system will manage what? And the apps. Because maybe more, one or more than one app would like to access the same hardware at the same time. For example, I'm listening to music and there is a phone call. What will happen? The music should stop, the phone call should be raised so I can answer it. If I decline the phone call, what will happen? The music will be back again. And now you notice it in your devices. Sometimes whenever you are listening to a music and there is a phone call, what will happen? The sound of the music, the volume of the music will be lower for a second too to alert you that there is. Even if you get a notification, it happens sometimes. So who's controlling this? The operating system. So the operating system is there to manage and control the accessing of the apps to the hardware or the share that will happen of the hardware by, by different apps. And this is what we call a system software. So a system software is designed to, to provide a platform, controller, manager, which other software can run on top of it, such as app. Like apps. So without an operating system, you will not be able to install or download any app. If you have a problem in your operating system, the whole computer will be useless. Done. If you have a problem in Windows, done. You cannot even control anything because the, the operating system is a brain in terms of managing and controlling. You get it? The operating system is the one that will take control of the microprocessor, will tell the microprocessor what to do and what not to do. What about application softwares? To do a specific task. They are there to do a very specific task. And that's why whenever we look at system software, if we look here, whenever we look at system software, you will find that you will be asked of giving an example of system software. And these are the example. The, the major one, the most important one is what? The operating system, isn't it? 
The most important one is why it manages the computer function. We mentioned this. What others do you have utilities such as antiviruses? Do you have antiviruses? Why we have it? To make sure that the system is clean. It needs to make sure that every software inside is a, a clean software. It's not a software comes there to affect the overall performance of the computer. Are we good? What else we have? Device drivers. This is as well just like an app. Device drivers. And device drivers, you notice it even in children now. Whenever a child comes the first time and look at a bottle, they don't know what it is. But if you show them that it can be opened and closed and give it to them then, they will now open it and close. The same for the phone. If you show the children how you are using the phone, they will, yes, they will be. So that means that whenever you bring a device to the computer and attach it to the computer, the computer might not know what is this device. You need to install a software to tell the computer. For example, if I attach a printer to my computer, my operating system will say question mark. What is this? If I install the printer software, what will happen? Now the computer will be happily working with the printer and will be able to communicate with. So device drivers are there for what? To allow the hardware to run. You get it? That's why whenever you connect a device to the computer, the operating system has to recognize the device to know how to communicate with the device. Yes, if it recognizes it, it's good. Otherwise, they will ask you to install some kind of a small software that will allow the computer to understand the device attached. And that's what we call them, system. Example of a system, software. So an example of system software so far is operating and device and utilities such as anti-viruses. And we have these two which are very important. These are very important because look, the computer language is different than our language. Our language is letters based language like English, Arabic language and the rest of the languages. The computer language is a machine language. So whenever we store something inside the computer, it will be stored as a machine language storage, isn't it? But whenever we would like to display it for us, we'll have to display it in our, so we need a translator. We need a translator. For example, whenever you take your picture and store it in the computer, your picture in the computer will be stored like this in zeros and ones, digital. This is how your picture looks for the computer. This is the file. But whenever I click to open the picture, it has to be converted back into pixels, into images, into colors. You get it? This is the responsibility of the compiler. So a compiler is a system that comes to the operating system as well to translate what? From a specific language to be understood by? Or from our language to the computer language. Look, look, whenever you are actually compiling, sometimes we say that if you have an app, the app might be programmed in different files, isn't it? For example, different levels or different background or different music. But sometimes whenever you are designing the same app, it will be designed different in different files. For example, you'll find now whenever they are, they, are, they are designing the games, a team will be responsible for the characters, another team will be responsible for how the background looks, another team will be responsible for the music. So each and every team of them is actually designing the same game, however, separately. At the end, what they do? They join them all into one app or one game. How we can join them? That means we are linking them together. So we need to link this compiled file into how many apps? One app. How we do it? Using linkers. So linkers are there because sometimes you have more than one compiled files and you need all of them to join to become how many? One app. That's why whenever you open this kind of game, sometimes in the same game you can select different difficulties or different maps or different levels, isn't it? Click level one, click this map, click this map. These normally are designed in separate parts. But at the end, they are all joined together as, as one. So you get the point about system software, is it clear? App software, we mentioned, yes. What? Explain what? Linkage, designing the game in separate files, linking all the files into one app. You get it? 
design it, for example, level one will be in a file, level two will be on a file, level three will be in a file. Then level one will be in the jungle, level two in the desert, level three in the mountains, you get it? You can actually play different levels in a game, isn't it? So this will be designed differently, the parts are different, but all of them are how many apps belong to the same app? Are we good? Yes, system software is? Application software, this is the easiest part. We said why? Applications are there to do a specific task. So you might need to install it or download it or, or not, up to you. If you'd like, for example, to type letters, what you install? Word. If you'd like to play games, what you install? Games. Yes, spreadsheet for numbers and for calculations. Are we good? And now we mention what the computer is actually storing everything as? Digital. digital. And remember, we have two different types of data. We have digital data and we have analog data. Digital data is the computer data. Digital data are normally binary, zeros and, and ones. Are we good? They are discrete. We call them discrete data. Analog data are continuous data. Analog are continuous data. And the nature of the data is analog. The nature is analog. For example, for example, if I'm taking a picture, look, if I'm taking a picture in the camera, I can take the picture in different quality, isn't it? I can take an HD picture or a 2K or a 4K, you get it? Now, what if I go from HD to 2K or 4K? What will happen? The quality will become better. Why? In terms of digital, what we mean by the quality will become better? That means more number of samples will be taken. More number of from the analog, because the nature is analog. Let me give you another example. Whenever you are playing in YouTube and you have a very bad internet connection, you will be playing using 144 pixel. If your connection is better, you go where? Four, for example, seven or, yes, 470 or 450 pixel. And then you go where? HD. And then 2K, this is in YouTube. If you have a very good internet connection, you can go higher, higher quality, isn't it? That's why if you are opening YouTube in your device now and you have a bad internet connection, you'll find the picture is, is, it's not 100%, okay. The number of samples taken are less. Whenever the picture quality increases, that means you are taking more number of samples. I will give you an example. This is the picture as analog, isn't it? Let's say, if you are using a bad internet connection, you will take two samples, this and this. How many samples from the analog? Two. How it will look like in digital? Is it the same? See? It looks like triangle here. It wasn't triangle. But you took how many samples? Two from the analog to convert it into digital. What if I'd like more quality? Take more number of samples. Take one here, one here, one here, one here. So whenever you are doing the, the digital one and reconstructing the original one, it will be like what? Like this. You get it? So whenever, 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 you would like to convert an analog signal into a digital signal, that means you are doing what? Taking samples. If you take more samples, the quality will become always better. If you take less samples, the quality will become worse. You get it? So remember this whenever you are watching YouTube. If you have a very bad internet connection, you will find that they will give you what quality? 144P. You can't even see anything. And you can increase it. Whenever you increase it, that means they will send you more samples. So whenever you look at something, you will find even the tiny details appears. Why the tiny details appear in high quality? Because these tiny details are sent, are taken as samples. You got it?
And these are the rules for operating system. We mentioned them before. Why we need an operating system? Why we pay money now for operating systems? Because they do so many tasks for us. One of the tasks is what they do, provide you with the user interface. You'll find people saying that I like Android because the icons look nicer. I can jump between application quicker. The user interface is easier. Others, they might say, I like iOS because the user interface is easier. So I like how the icons are there, how the shortcuts are there, how to swipe up, swipe down, swipe left. These are what we call them user interface. How you interact with the, with the system. Are we good? So different operating system will have different user interfaces. What next? Allow you to do what? Save, organize, and delete files. Right click, copy, right click, for example, paste. Right click, delete, right click, undo, redo, put files in different folders, name the folders, name the subfolders, one folder for my music, one folder for my picture, one folder for this subject, you get it? You can organize. Who will allow you to do this? The operating system. What else? Input and output and backing up devices. If I now connect a keyboard, what will happen? The operating system will immediately recognize that this is a keyboard and I can still continue typing. If I connect a mouse, automatically the computer will recognize, the operating system will recognize this is a mouse. And I will be able to click on different, you get my point. Yes? So whenever you connect input devices, output devices, or storage devices, what will happen? The operating system will be able to allow you to use them. Use them or take advantage of them. What next? What should be put where? In the RAM. Remember, we mentioned most of the time you will be running more than one application at the same time. Who will manage and control what application is put in the RAM? What application access the speakers, access the microprocessor, access the input device, access the output device? Who? The operating system. Because whenever you double click on one of the app, that app will be taken by your operating system. Part of the app will be taken and put where? In the RAM. Whenever you click on another app, it will be also taken where? To the RAM. And the RAM will be there to manage all the currently open app. If I close one of them, it will be removed from the RAM. Who controls all this? The operating system. So it controls what should be put in the memory as if you look in your notes. What else? Allow you to run, download, upload apps and files, isn't it? If you have an operating system, then you can now install and start downloading apps. Without it, can you do it? No. What else? Provide you with security. The first thing you do whenever you're getting a new phone is what? Setting up your password to prevent the other family members from messing up with your phone. First thing is doing that, either a physical password or nowadays using biometrics, isn't it? Such as fingerprint, face recognition, retina scanner, yes? Voice recognition. All of these, we call them what? Biometrics. Because they identify you based on unique feature on your body. Unique fingerprint, unique retina, unique face recognition, not 100% sure. If you are twins, big problem. That's why face recognition, for example, is not preferred because twins will be, the same goes for boys. You get it? They are not 100. Boys, if you get sick, that's a problem. The system will not open. Open up, you are sick. The system will say, wait until you become. Okay, take your bills. Huh? You get the point? So these are what we call them, the roles of an operating system. Okay, let's continue. So we mentioned 